Fantasy Alarm NBA DFS Show with John Impemba and James Grande. What is going on, FA Nation? John Impemba here with your NBA DFS live stream preview of the Thursday three-game main slate. This is the final slate before the NBA All-Star break. Don't come back until next Thursday here. It's a little bit of a hiatus, uh, but they gave us three games here on this Thursday to talk about. Uh, again, some pretty good matchups here as well. Milwaukee, Memphis, Golden State versus Utah, and Minnesota, Portland here to close out the final slate ahead of the NBA All-Star game. Now, uh, with some of these star players, we do, of course, have to see whether or not they will or won't be in these lineups. We'll go game by game here for you and break it all down to get you ready here for this Thursday slate. Uh, again, just three games. This will be a little bit of a quicker show here today, uh, but taking a look, starting things off with this first matchup, Milwaukee versus Memphis. We know Memphis, the struggles that they have had, especially when it comes to the injury bug. Milwaukee, on the other hand, uh, on their second coach with Doc Rivers, starting to play a little bit better, but they are coming off of a blowout loss to the Miami Heat here. None of these teams are on back-to-back, so they should all have fresh legs here. But we will, again, have to see you know what stars decide to play the final day before the All-Star break. Again, a number of these players are going to be going to All-Star weekend, so there is a chance maybe they sit out uh, these games here as well. But uh, let's take a look at this Milwaukee-Memphis matchup. Looking from the Milwaukee-Memphis side at the point guard position, you have Damian Lillard. He is $8,900. Uh, we just saw Jordan Goodwin sign with Memphis. He could be in for some minutes right away with this team at $4,400. Uh, Gilliard, Derek Rose uh, are kind of the players he can also expect to see some minutes out of here. Uh, Pat Bev you know, playing some backup point guard minutes for Milwaukee. If you are prioritizing uh, the point guard position in this matchup. Obviously, Lillard finds himself in a pretty great spot here going up against Memphis. The scoring has come around, no Chris Middleton, and the price point being under $9,000 certainly leaves room uh, for some nice ceiling play. But on the Memphis side of things, we got to see who's going to be in or out of the starting lineup. As I mentioned, you know Jordan Goodwood did sign with them. Uh, there is a chance that he can be thrown into a big role right away. They need that guard depth there. Uh, we've seen Jacob Gilliard play some minutes. He hasn't all been all that exciting, um, but when he's been thrown into a role that he hasn't really been familiar with this year, um, we have seen him at least produce of late. The assists have been good. Uh, the scoring has been you know, erratic, but paying off his price point there. And then Derek Rose, uh, again, as someone that's coming into this game as questionable, um, you know, we'll have to wait and see uh, how he kind of turns out here as well. Uh, you know, limited minutes, hasn't played more than 16 now uh, in the month here, but we know he can still score 19 and 23 fantasy points in two of the last three at 4K will certainly be enough for you here. Uh, but again, we have to see who's going to be in and out of the lineup for Memphis. When looking at the shooting guard position, we have some guys with dual positional eligibility that we've been getting a lot of exposure to. Uh, Vince Williams, you know, our lunch pail guy here, still hanging around $6,500. 37 plus minutes a night. You know he's going to score. You know he's going to rebound. But how about these assist totals lately? He's basically been being the de facto point guard. Eight, eight, and nine assists over the last three games for Vince Williams. He has that shooting guard, small forward eligibility. So you can slot him in as your guard, slot him into your forward, your small forward, your shooting guard, and you tell a lot of ways to get Vince Williams into your lineup. Uh, when looking at replacements for Chris Middleton, obviously we've seen some minutes go to Malik Beasley. Uh, he's a guy that takes a lot of shots from three-point range. He's been knocking down those threes lately, which has presented him with a decent ceiling when it comes to his scoring. 21 and 16 actual points in two of the last three games here. Um, but the shooting is going to be erratic. Ultimately, he is the third option uh, and sometimes fourth option in this offense. And again, knowing this matchup against Memphis, where Milwaukee is a big road favorite here, uh, we'll see if he even gets the full allotment of run if this one ends up being a blowout. Uh, Luke Kennard is somebody that stepped up into some big minutes the other night against the Pelicans, 29 minutes here. Um, got 12 points in that game, 18 fantasy points. He's another one that shoots from long range. He was playing their de facto point guard earlier in the year. Um, again, only one assist in that game against the Pelicans. But for 29 minutes at $4,800, certainly could do worse for a guy that's going to shoot a lot of threes here. Conchar, Connaughton, some more names that you could possibly find. Conchar took a bit of a minute's hit uh, in that last game. We'll have to wait and see. Um, you know, how that continues to progress for him in this Memphis rotation as they start to get some of their guys uh, back and acclimated to their lineup. Uh, and then Connaughton is another player going to play in the mid to, to low 20s here, another depth piece with uh, Middleton out of the lineup. 
at the small forward position, a lot of these guys we've discussed already. Uh, again, Middleton unlikely to play. Williams, we know. Concher. Jay Crowder has been one that has started at times. Uh, again, the minutes trending up and down for him. A lot of inconsistent play. Largely just going to avoid Jay Crowder here at $4,300, uh, even if he finds his way into the starting lineup. And again, not much here at small forward uh, outside of Williams or Concher as a play on this uh, in this particular matchup. Could very well be a spot we don't even utilize a small forward in this game with Golden State, Utah, and Minnesota. Portland both offering uh, better overall potential plays there at the position. When you go to power forward, it's what the big names are. Giannis and Jaron Jackson both there. Uh, Giannis projecting to be one of the top overall plays on the slate. We know what Triple J can do, but also have to recognize that this is a tough matchup for him. He's going to take a lot of shots, but the foul trouble could certainly be prevalent there. You have Bobby Portis, you have Santi Aldama, and Gigi Jackson, all names we've seen and played and plugged into our lineups a lot lately, and, and guys that should probably see some decent amount of ownership here uh, in this game moving forward, especially on the Memphis side of things. And then at center, again, a lot of dual positional eligibility. You have Brooke Lopez is the primary name we haven't discussed. Going to play mid to high 20s here. Um, you know, can block a lot of shots, as you've seen. The scoring's erratic. Rebounding hasn't been terrible, but at $5,700, I think we're going to find better setter options on this slate. Moving on over to Golden State in Utah here. Uh, again, this matchup at the point guard position. Steph Curry, your top price point guard. Brandon Podemski, uh, the second highest price point guard at $6,100 here. Uh, notable means Colin Sexton and Jordan Clarkson are shooting guard only here. Uh, that leaves Keontae George as your first point guard for the Utah Jazz. 29 minutes, 30 minutes, the last couple of games. Really struggled in this matchup against Golden State the other day, but I would expect a bounce-back performance out of him. I do love the minutes. He's not a great shooter, so the scoring is going to be at times inconsistent, but days where he does hit the shots, the points are going to be there. The fantasy points are certainly going to be there to pay off the price tag. And again, you want to go Steph, perfectly okay there. He came into that game the other night and basically closed it out for them against Utah when Utah started making a run. He had 60 fantasy points in that one. And then Brandon Pajemski, again, 25 minutes in that game, but continues to fill out the stat sheet at 6K. Moving over to shooting guard, Colin Sexton is here at $6,400. Again, Sexton sort of falling back a little bit with Keontae George taking on a more prominent role, but he's still a big scorer, 37 fantasy points, enough to pay off his $6,400 price point. Uh, Jordan Clarkson at 6 k Clarkson had another big game, 22 actual, and that one 33 minutes. We talk about it all the time with Will Hardy. Uh, there are times where he'll just ride the hot hand. Jordan Clarkson's been that guy the last couple of games, resulting in fewer minutes at, for, at times for Colin Sexton. Clarkson at 6K, if he gets hot again with his scoring touch, they'll leave him on the floor, which means he has a nice ceiling potential at $6,000. Uh, uh, Clay Thompson, however, uh, you know, had been in the doghouse. 11 of 19 shooting might be enough to get you out of the doghouse at 30 minutes. 26 actual there against Utah. Again, we've seen him benched to close out these games lately in favor of Brandon Podjemski, but if he's going to shoot 11 of 19, he's going to retake that role there and potentially have more minutes coming his way. If he gets off to a slow start, though, just know uh, that those minutes could elude him and he could see Green back down to the mid to 20s like we've seen him the last few games prior to that. Uh, 5,500, though, still a good price tag given the matchup. High game total in this one between Golden State and Utah. After that, I mean, you have Moody, you have guys like Gary Payton, Townhorn, Tucker, small slate. If you want to throw some darts, you certainly can. I uh, would probably take a look uh, at Payton or Tucker over Moody if I had to, to pick one uh, over Gary Payton there. Um, at the small forward position here, uh, pretty interesting because we have Lori Markin at $8,100, Andrew Wiggins at $5,100 as well, kind of the top two guys uh, in terms of minutes and rotation playing time. So, uh, marking in 81, you know, 28 fantasy points, not paying off the price point. But uh, again, this game was a blowout. I would expect a better performance out of him moving forward. Wiggins still getting the minutes, 28 minutes for him that last game, 17 actual, 6 of 10 shooting. All of that looks pretty good and consistent uh, with him. And they're going to leave him in this low 5K range uh, on a smaller slate. He's got a nice little floor there. At the power forward position, Jonathan Kaminga, I would expect to be one of the highest rostered plays on the slate. I uh, had a bad shooting night, just four of 10. Only came out with 17 fantasy points in that game in 27 minutes. But you've seen what he's done. The track record's there. You can certainly run back to Kaminga there at $6,700. Feel the same way, really, about John Collins and Draymond Green at $66 and $6,300 here as well. 
um, taking a look at Collins specifically, you know, got Will Hardy a little bit, lost some time in that game because the backups were making a run in the comeback. But still, 11 7 5 in 28 minutes was well on his way to another 30 plus fantasy point game. A uh, really solid spot for them as long as Utah can remain competitive. Them being at home maybe gives them that opportunity uh, to do so uh, here this go around. Uh, and then, as I mentioned, Draymond, power forward center, <clears throat> only 23 minutes in that game, got into some foul trouble, but still nearly triple doubled. 12, 10, and 8 uh, can definitely run back to him on this smaller slate. And then at the center position, again, we talked Draymond Green already, but Walker Kessler certainly a name uh, that you're going to want to have on your radar. 26 minutes, another four blocks. The blocks have been ridiculous for Walker Kessler here, uh, over 30 fantasy points. He has a big size advantage in this game. He's going to be active on the glass. And I love the fact that he's keeping the fouls down. So take a look at Walker Kessler at your center position there in this one. And then we'll close things out here, Minnesota and Portland. Again, we just saw this game. The other night, uh, Portland actually hung around, played them tough, uh, but ultimately Minnesota ended up closing out that show in a big way. Uh, Injury-wise, you know, Bracken Brogdon is out here, um, you know, for the uh, Portland Trailblazers uh, and Shaden Sharp, obviously, as well. But the rest of this team, at least for now, uh, looking to be healthy. When we're looking at this matchup, you know, Anthony Simons is $7,800, played 33 minutes, had 34 fantasy points, looking pretty good there. Uh, Scoot Henderson uh, going to be back for this game. You know, He played 34 minutes in that game, 28 fantasy points. Great price point for him. These guys are going to be in for a lot of minutes here uh, in this rotation. You have Mike Conley played 27 minutes in that game. Again, it ended up being a blowout. 30 fantasy points still, though, because he's filling out your stat sheet. Uh, and then, as I mentioned on the live stream, Delano Banton, 25 and 26 minutes now. And the two games have been with the Portland Trailblazers. He might just be locked into some minutes. He would Scoot Henderson coming back. He saw the 26 minutes there. So um, take a look at Delano Banton as a value point guard option for you on this slate. Looking at shooting guard, Anthony Edwards had a monster night. 41 actual, 56 fantasy points against Portland. Don't see much of that changing here. $8,700 still far too cheap uh, for him what, given what his upside is. Um, you know, unless people are out or it's another blowout situation, you do have NEW 25, 24, and 26 minutes the last three games. And that's because they've won uh, by 20 plus points basically in all three of those games. So if you think a blowout happens, you could see some NEW getting some extra run uh, here in this one. At the small forward position, uh, talking to Anthony Edwards already, you do have Jeremy Grant. Awful game for Grant. Just one rebound, only 12 actual points. Very difficult to pay 7400 for him if you think that's the kind of production you're going to get out of him. We love the 35 minutes, but you're going to need to see more out of him if you're going to be even entertaining paying that price point. And then it dumps down. I mean, you know, Tamani Kamara played 20 minutes. If you think there's some blowout run for him there. Uh, McDaniels played 24, missed all seven of his shots. So, you know, a lot of inconsistencies here. Kyle Anderson, 22 minutes, 23 fantasy points. We know he fills the stat sheet up. So, you know, a couple of dart throws on a smaller slate, but I don't think you necessarily – need to go here in this direction power forward carl anthony towns great spot you can go to jabari walker here if you want to as well assuming you can stay out of some foul trouble and then nas reed are going to be your key power forward options and then we close things out here rudy gobert deandre ayton ayton had a monster game it was really the key reason why portland was able to hang around for as long as they did 11 of 12 shooting 22 and 16 in that game. Can he go back to back performances against Rudy Gobert? Knowing how good of a defender he is, I guess we'll wait and find out on the flip side, Gobert himself, 16 and 15 in that game. So again, everybody three games slayed here. We'll have the playbook out for you, getting you all ready uh, for this uh, Thursday main slate ahead of the NBA all-star break. If you have any questions, get us in the discord, find us on Twitter, and we will catch you guys later.